make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. said gallery view it was in the gallery view or is that does it say speaker view now i had it on gallery view um, this one is it shouldn't it be this one Yeah, that's what I was hoping to see, but you can play with it. to this screen because I had my chats up and everything on that screen. I had that screen up when it was full screen, but Because I don't think it's working. Okay, can I 
Yeah, but who's the speaker? Or who's the small one? If you don't go full screen, you can see it on the side view. If you sure. Have to sure. Then you won't get it when you. Right. Morning, everyone. Just trying to get set up here. So, these are the people that are interviewed. Okay. So, when it says 29 participants, there are others that are coming. Okay. Morning, Harmon family. Welcome to Harvest Community Church. Those who are just joining, we'll be starting momentarily, waiting for some more people to join. Yeah, audio is fine. Morning, you guys keep your audio on. Yet. Good morning. No, I love Hey, Brian. Morning, Pastor Brian. Gary, Suzanne. No, it's on. You guys see? Okay. Like that. Thank you. <laughs> Say hi, Pika. Hi, Pika. Say hi, Pika. <laughs> oh. Doggy. Oh, Yes. Morning, Eric. Morning, Brian. Hey, Brian. I was on mute. Sorry. No, no problem. So are you hosting today? I'm helping out. Nice. Thank you for helping. My pleasure. Good morning, Brian. Morning. <laughs> this is my sister, Dawn. Hi. We're at her house. Hi. Good morning. Okay, perfect. Morning, Pastor Gary, Suzanne. Morning, Lamb family, Arca family. I miss all, everybody here. <laughs> and the Shungs. Morning. Morning, Lee Hi. family. How do I get this to expand more than just here? Or can I? I don't think it makes 
make so much of a difference, Mom. That's okay. I know, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't make much of a difference. <laughs> You say so. <clears throat> Perfect. Thanks. I'm trying. Mute yourself. Mute, mute, mute. That's our sound. Morning, Chows, Chow family. Hi, Eileen. Chuck, Daddy, good morning to you. Hey, Pastor Jerry, you look different. Uh, yeah, hi, Sophie. Hi. You can get a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Matilda uh, family. Say hi. Hello. Hi, right, Toby. Hi. Hi, Harvest family. Good morning, Fang family. Great. Hey, Rich. Hello, Sammy. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> so many faces in this day. If you're wondering why my face is so big, it's because I was told to get closer to the mic. <laughs> now I got a super close up. And you look good, Brian. <laughs> I need makeup. <laughs> Where'd the hair and makeup go? I don't know. You know, there's a Zoom feature called Touch Up My Appearance they can click off. Are you serious? In the settings, the video section, you can actually uh, check the box. That's too much for me to check. That's my appearance. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need it, Brian. Yeah. And look the way you are. I need, I need to take 10 years off of my life here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. I check it off for work calls all the time. <laughs> Good morning, Ron and Ann. Morning, Ying family. Is that Jack driving or something? <laughs> Hope everyone had a nice 4th of July. I don't know about you, but I heard I heard fireworks going in the distance for gosh, I feel like it was like three or four hours straight. More fireworks than I've heard in a long time. Wait for just a few more minutes. Maybe one more minute and then we'll get started. All right, welcome to Harvest Community Church. 
As with the past several Sundays, uh, we are starting our service with a psalm. And so Kimberly has our psalm for today. Good morning and welcome to Harvest Community Church of Irvine. My name is Kimberly and I would like to welcome you to our church family. This morning, we are going to start our service by reading Psalm 128. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Peace be on Israel. And now let's join Pastor Jerry for our time of worship. Let's go through the announcements uh, right now. So we'll go ahead and do that. Kimberly? Good morning, Harvest, and thank you for joining us this weekend. My name is Kimberly, and here are some of the things that are happening at Harvest this week. If you are visiting Harvest for the very first time, we would like to welcome you. To learn more about our church, speak to a pastor, or learn more about growing in your relationship with God, please contact us using this information. Do you have any prayer requests? Please email Pastor Jerry and our church family would be happy to pray for you. Our Promised Land kids will be meeting this Wednesday from five to six o'clock on Zoom. This is open to all students in first through sixth grade. For more information, please contact Sammy Lee. The park will be meeting on the following days this week. You can give your tithes and offering online with the Zelle app using this address. Or you can mail us here at our new church building. For more information about Harvest Community Church of Irvine, please visit our website at harvestirvine.org. You can also connect with us on social media on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for coming this morning, and I hope you have a great week. back. Um, did you guys want to go ahead and take care of those extra announcements, Brian? Yeah, we can go ahead and do that. Then. Why don't you go ahead and do that? So we have some additional announcements that weren't included. Um, number one is the Orchard, uh, the women's ministry group, our new name. Orchard will have, will have a meet and greet with Jenny McGill, and that'll be on Saturday, June 11th. 10 to 12 noon. That'll be at Bill Barber Park, and the Evite is coming out soon. And Orchard will be resuming their summer study on Galatians. That'll be Monday, July 13th from 7 to 9 p.m. And the Zoom details will be coming soon on that. Uh, also, Prayer Circle, that'll be Wednesday, July 15th from 8 to 9 p.m. And again, the Zoom link will be coming up. The young adults, they will be having a game day today, 5 p.m. Check your email for the Zoom link. And be sure to be back here next week where we'll be having our installation Sunday uh, that Pastor Gary will be passing the baton to Pastor Kevin. So join us next week.
turn back to Pastor. Thank Larry. you so much. Thank you for the announcements. Thank you for. Um, thank you, everybody, for your patience with us. We are still working out a lot of uh, little details, um, but God is still in control. And uh, this Sunday, we're we're having a special Sunday. This is our Sunday send off Sunday for Pastor Gary and Susan. Thank you for your patience with us. Yeah. And. Uh, and uh, Pastor Gary, just Pastor uh, Gary, just send Sorry, yet another technical difficulty. Oh, well, can I keep going? Okay. So yeah, we wanted to send Pastor Gary off um, a little bit differently, but uh, because of the circumstances, of course, we have to sort of um, adjust ourselves and, and, and change things. So um, this is still gonna be a special day as we give thanks for the Lord um, provision with Pastor Gary, and we'll be sharing with him a little bit later. But um, we had asked Suzanne, what are some of Pastor Gary's favorite hymns? And she gave us a, a, a pretty good list. And so we picked a couple, and we're going to start off our worship with those songs as we uh, head into our time of worship together. All right. The first one is Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. It's, of course... A song that everybody can join in with, even as we join together with the angels around the throne of God. So the the the, ver the words are. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. So let's sing that together. Oh, 
Stop our God. There's nothing that could stop our God. There's nothing that could stop our God. There is nothing. There's nothing that could stop our God. There's nothing that could stop our God. There's nothing that could stop our God. There is nothing. See, there is nothing. There's nothing that could stop our God. Oh, there's nothing that could stop our God. There's nothing that could stop our God. Oh, there is nothing. There is nothing over our God. Breaker of chains, Jesus has tried over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. Oh, sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. Amen, Lord. There's nothing that can stand against you. We stand in your presence now, worship you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We want to give you the honor and the glory. We give you thanks for this day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, worship team, for the excellent set of both hymns as well as contemporary music. And now we'll transition to Pastor Gary, who will 
teach us about integrity. Pastor Gary. Microphone. Oh, I am off. Uh, good morning. I uh, don't have the privilege of uh, hearing. I don't have the privilege of hearing any responses from you, so I'm going to assume that you're listening and uh, occasionally smiling, and uh, go from there a little bit. You know, I asked myself this week. You know, what is it uh, that makes Harvest Church special? And we've been here for uh, three months short of uh, about three years. And uh, a lot of words come to my mind. Friendliness, laughter, passion, openness, a willingness to confess failings, a forgiving spirit, and a desire to live for the glory of the Lord and to many more. And all of those uh, characteristics apply, certainly to the men and the women that I've been privileged to work with uh, on the elder board and the deacon board as well. I enjoyed serving as an elder with uh, Jerry and Sean and Al and Daryl. And I had the privilege on a number of different occasions to meet with the deacons as well and uh, you've just got top drawer leadership and all of them would be willing to lay their lives down for the lord and for the people of god itself so it's uh, it's just been a privilege uh, to be exposed to, to the zeal there in making christ preeminent one of these days when we uh, things settle down a little bit and they get back to normal and the coronavirus, COVID-19, is uh, truly under control, then I, I su suspect that it'll be time to increase the footprint with our new facility that's there. And I suspect that with uh, Kevin and his zeal and his giftedness and his love for the Lord uh, would be absolutely outstanding. And then along with uh, the great gifts that his wife Jen has as well in her own right. And uh, you just might have to go out and purchase some new chairs for that new facility. Uh, what I'd like to do today, I, I picked this out because I wanted to talk about it, but uh, it's the subject of integrity, the subject of honesty. And uh, it's... Uh, it's something that we appreciate. Authenticity is something that matters to us all. And conversely, we disparage pretension. Now, in light of that, I, I, I'd like to uh, speak a little bit about how amazing it is that we do pretend and how adept that we are at to doing it. And to prove my point, what I'm going to do is mention a few different scenarios this morning in which people commonly fake it. And after each scenario, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you've ever, at least one time in your life, been guilty of this. And we've done this a little bit in the past. It's non-threatening. You're among family and friends. And so I want everybody to participate with me for just a few minutes here. First, first thing, you're watching television when you hear a car pulling into the garage. It might be your parents, it might be your spouse, it might be your roommates, but you immediately turn off the television, grab a book, or maybe take a briefcase, empty out a bunch of papers that look important, and, uh, you know, as they're walking in. Uh, or maybe you get on the floor and just simply do push-ups for a while. If you've ever pretended to be productive, when in reality you are nothing but a couch potato, would you please just lift, lift your hand right there so that your family can see? I can't see it, but God can, and he'll like that. So only your family will see all of this, and God. Okay, that's the first one. Second one, let's say you're in a circle of friends and uh, or acquaintances and somebody mentions 
an important person, perhaps a book title, or maybe a current event. It's something that you feel that you ought to know something about. And even though you don't have a ghost of a guess of really what's going on in the midst of that conversation, you stand there and nod your head appropriately and maybe utter some pious platitude so as to pretend you understand what has taken place. If you've ever done that at least one time in your life, would you lift your hand there? And I can lift my hand. Okay. <clears throat> Let me give you the third one. Uh, you're driving along the freeway and you come to a place where there are multiple interchanges and traffic is getting backed up. And there's a guy on your right that's trying to get your attention so that you'll let him cut in front of you. You know that he's there, you know what he wants, but you don't look at him so that you don't resemble a selfish jerk, but just an unobservant life, unobservant nut guy that just refuses to let him in. If you've ever done that at least one time in your life, go ahead and lift your hands, okay? A lot of honest people, I say. So we've all pretended. We've all pretended to know things that we did not know. We pretended to achieve things that we did not achieve. We pretended to be hard at work when we've really been wasting time. We pretend to be smarter and at times kinder than we really are. Now, there's nothing wrong with putting our best foot forward. Uh, but we need to be careful about living deceptively. Now, most of us would probably rank honesty as one of the most important personal attributes or virtues. And there's a good reason for that, as we shall see. Now, I have a couple of points today that I want to share with you. Uh, two major points. The first one is the need for honesty. Uh, and the second is, uh, the components of honesty. I'm sorry there. The need for honesty and the components of honesty. First of all, let's look at the need of honest for honesty today. There are a couple of reasons why we need to be honest. First, an honest person reflects God's character. Uh, Truth-telling is at its most fundamental level an evidence of spiritual life. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 reminds us that murderers, idolaters, and liars will be cast into the lake of fire. Christians tell lies, but this verse says a chronic liar is not a Christian. John 8, verse 44, says that Satan is a liar and the father of lies. So Satan lies about life, about death, about God, about Christ, about heaven, about hell, about truth, about life. When you become a Christian, however, you enter into the realm of truth. Romans 3, verse 4 says, let God be true. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 6 says, Christ, Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You see, the Holy Spirit takes up residence in our life and is called in John chapter 14, verse 7, the spirit of truth. And the reason he's called the spirit of truth is because he guides us into truth. And Jesus said of the scriptures, thy word is true. Now, when we follow Christ, therefore, what we do is we step out of the domain of lies and into the realm of truth. <clears throat> we know the true God because we've been redeemed by the true Messiah. We've been indwelt by the true spirit. We've been guided by the true word. And therefore, we speak a true message. Now second, an honest person fosters community. Alexander Pope said, an honest man is a miracle, simply meaning that he's a work of God. In Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 17, it says this, he who speaks truth tells what is right, but a false witness is deceitful. 
You see, when we deceive someone, we deny them the reality to know, deny them the right to know reality. And that affects their ability to make good decisions. Now, honesty fosters community, community among friends, community among family members, community among soldiers, community among athletic teams, community among drama and musical groups, and community in the church. Now, let's look at a few of the components of honesty here. And there are three that I'd like to put before you. First, <clears throat> an honest person has a reliable life. That means it's genuine. What you observe on the outside is an outcropping of what happens to be true on the inside. Uh, there's no hypocrisy. Uh, a hypocrite is in fact an actor. Now in the first century, actors would wear a mask. Uh, if she happened to play a joyful role, she would wear a joy, joyous mask. If she played a sad role, she would wear a grieving mask. Now a good actor could play the role, even if she were sad, uh, in real life, she could play a joyful role. Or she could play a villainous role, even if she were gracious in real life. She assumes the personality of the part regardless of her real life demeanor. Now let me offer a couple of modern day examples. Uh, most of you will perhaps never heard of either of these two guys that I'm going to mention. Uh, some of your parents uh, certainly have, but do you remember the name Anthony Hopkins? Now Anthony Hopkins was a great actor. He artfully played the scholarly C.S. Lewis in Shadowlands, and he was able to shift gears and artfully play the diabolical Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. Great actor. Do you remember John Wayne? Uh, perhaps more of you remember him than anybody else, but he was never noted as a great actor. Uh, he once played the centurion and stood at the foot of the cross in the movie, The Greatest Story That Eva's Ever Told. And he has a statement there. He says, well, I really guess he was the son of God. Now, even though he was dressed as a centurion, when we listened to him, we knew that he was a cowboy. Now, here's the point. Play acting is fine on stage, but it's devastating in real life. The Bible says, don't be duplicitous. Don't have one set of behavioral standards at church and another set at work or at school. Don't airbrush your faults for the sake of impression management. An honest person simply has a reliable and authentic life. Second, an honest person uses responsible words. Now let me comment on four different types of lies that we can tell. The first kind of lies are cruel lies that are intended to hurt someone. Uh, we rip the hide off of somebody's reputation without knowing the full story. That would be a cruel lie. We pass on detrimental information about someone, which is wrong to begin with but then we do it in an exaggerated form to those who are neither part of the problem or part of the solution. We tell the truth perhaps purposefully to the wrong person because we know that when that person, when that truth enters their ears, they will smash it into falsehood with their own immaturity. And then they'll pass on detrimental information and reports in a manner that is totally out of context and tying it to the worst possible motives. So you can be guilty of actually telling a cruel lie by communicating truth to the wrong person. Second, there are cowardly lies when we're afraid to tell the truth. Let me give you a little story from our family. You know, when our four sons were really small, when they were young, uh, perhaps one, three, five, and seven, uh, we would throw them at times into the same bathtub, and all four of them would be in there splashing around and so forth. 
Um, Suzanne would probably call it assembly line hygiene. I referred to it more as the Bay of Pigs. But uh, anyway, on one occasion, uh, one of our sons cracked off uh, a gross swear word. And Suzanne was out in the hallway. She wasn't in the bathroom, but she heard what he said. And she walks in there somewhat horrified and looks at the guilty party and says, what did you say? Now, immediately he saw, uh, he was shaken with the realize, when he realized that his heir. And, uh, but he was quick and he was resourceful. And so he looked at his mom uh, and uh, knew that the folly of denial was completely out of the question. Uh, so uh, he decided to, to lie about it, and he mentioned a different swear word to her. And this one was worse than the first swear word. He thought it was more acceptable, but it wasn't. Uh, you know, it was kind of a cowardly form of a lie on an occasion that actually backfired. Uh, let me uh, give you a third, that there are calculated lies that are used to gain advantage. Uh, for instance, fudging the truth to secure a sale. Flattery for personal gain are examples of calculated lies. In other words, you discern what somebody needs to hear, and in order to tip the scales to your advantage, then you say it. Now, we call it white lies, so to speak. Uh, my Gary, for instance, my Gary, you haven't changed in 30 years. And my response to that is, have I been this ugly for three decades? <laughs> you know, we use euphemisms. Your lecture was deep, when in reality, I couldn't understand it because it was poorly communicated. Uh, how we use words are important, is important. We don't just use, if we don't use them well, and uh, if we aren't truly honest, then others will begin to doubt our ability to perceive reality and communicate it fairly. And then fourth, there are convenient lies. Now we use convenient lies when we don't want to offend other people. Uh, we call it personal diplomacy in social situations. Uh, you're at someone's house and time is dragging on. And finally, you look at your host and say, we have to leave. Our, our babysitter has a curfew. When in reality, you're absolutely bored to tears and cleaning public restrooms would be more enjoyable. Uh, perhaps this example, someone gives you a plate of brownies. Uh, a day or two later, they ask you, how did you like the brownies? And you say, I love them when in fact you hadn't even had one yet. Now that would be an example of a convenient lie. And just in case you're wondering, I do like brownies with nuts in them, okay? Anyway, let me offer uh, an important sidebar on truth telling. Ephesians 4 says, lay aside falsehood and tell the truth. The Bible is not a book of ethical principles. The Bible is a lot of case studies on how ethical principles are to be worked out in life. Your motive, in other words, is just as important as your behavior. And your behavior must be in accordance with God's law. Your motivation must be in accordance with God's heart. Our goal is not just to speak truth, but to speak it in such a way that that truth will penetrate into the heart of the person to whom we're speaking. In other words, truth must be formulated in such a way so that it will be received. The right truth given at the wrong time or in the wrong way will usually do more harm than good. Also keep in mind, if someone is antagonistic towards you, you may not be the one that should communicate a particular truth to that individual. For you to be open and uh, to communicate with your mouth might cause them to close their heart. So truth telling takes a great deal of wisdom. Third, 
an honest person is characterized by dependable promises. I want you to listen to the words of the late Lewis Smeads. Uh, he was a, a professor at Fuller Seminary for a number of decades. He's with the Lord now. But he made this, said this in one of his uh, very readable books. He says, when I make a promise, I testify that I was not routed along some unalterable itinerary by the psychic condition visited on me by my wacky parents. When I make a promise, I declare that my future was not predetermined by mixed up culture or of my tender years. No dog ever promised to be a loyal help. Only a person can make a promise. And when I do, I am most free. We all have needs. We all have instincts. We all have drives. They change over time. But if I make a promise, I will keep it regardless of my contrary inclinations at the moment. That's what makes you a human being in contrast to a cocker span. You see, our proclivity to break promises today has led to a decline actually in even making them. The movement away from a permanent marriage to a short-term live-in relationship is a movement away from promises. It's a predetermined decision that says this, when this relationship no longer cuts it in terms of my needs or my desires, I'm going to walk. I refuse to be bound by a promise and therefore I'm not going to make one. That's how animals operate. You see in the animal world, each moment is unrelated to the one before or the one after. They move about on the basis of their needs, their instincts and their desires. Animals don't make promises, people make promises. And if you refuse to make promises, or if you refuse to keep the promises that you do make, then you're lowering yourself to the level of what we would describe as an animal. Forgiveness, you see, frees you from being controlled by a painful past. Promises, on the other hand, keep you from being controlled by an unpredictable future. To your spouse, to your children, to your friends, to your church, you declare, you can count on me to keep my promises. I'm not going to be whipped around by my genes, by my glands, or by my impulses. Let me uh, kind of wrap this up, you know, because this week, uh, every single week, but uh, let's pick out this week, you're going to have a chance to live out the truth. And uh, to live out the truth this week may cause you, in some particular occasions, a measure of personal pain. It may put you at a disadvantage. You may be called even a bad person. But uh, you're going to live out the truth anyway because you know that it's going to please God. Now, because this is so extremely important, we're going to practice this before I let you go today. Now, I want you to remember the phrase, Here's my chance, okay? Here's my chance. That's the only thing you need to remember, and that's what you're going to need to say when I prompt you to do that. Here's my chance. What I'm going to do is give you a scenario, and at the end of that scenario, you respond with a phrase out loud, as loud as you can make it, here's my chance. Stick your hand up, say it, here's my chance, so that every member of your family, any person that you have to be with, if you've got friends over, so that they can all hear you say this. So here we go. Here's the first scenario I'm going to give you. This week, you're going to be late for an appointment, and it's your fault, and you're going to be tempted to fabricate some kind of an excuse. But instead of deceiving people, you're going to stop, and you're going to say, Here's my chance. Thank you, Suzanne, for saying that. That's good. She's participating. I hope all of you are. Second scenario. This week, you're going to find yourself in an awkward social situation. And it would be so easy to tell a mild lie in order to get yourself off the hook. But instead of deceiving people, you're going to stop 
and you're going to say to yourself, here's my chance, okay? And then the last one, this week, someone you love is going to ask, how do I look? Are my thighs too big? But instead of deceiving, you're gonna stop and you're gonna say, I didn't answer that one either. <laughs> now I suspect some of you lost some steam on that one, but here's the point. Our model is always the Lord Jesus Christ. And during his trial, Jesus could have wiggled out of the tear of the cross with a few well-chosen words uh, that would have flattered rather than inflamed his adversaries. But before Caiaphas and Herod and Pilate, Jesus said, here's my chance to tell the truth of who I am and what I came to do. And he did. And we are here today because he did. And the pain that comes from being truthful at times is going to be overwhelmed by that little small voice to remind you, here's my chance to follow Jesus. Here's my chance to foster community. And your pain will result in a party of heaven, in heaven. And God will look down with a smile on his face and say, there's somebody that got it right. Let me pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Uh, Suzanne and I uh, have been committed to it for decades now, and we thank you for what you've uh, done through it. Thank you for Harvest Church and for the privilege uh, that we have had of being part of this a wonderful assembly for two years, eight months, and eight days. And we thank you for every minute of it. So we've been blessed, we've been edified, we've been taught, we've been encouraged. And Lord, we are a better couple because of our experience with Harvest. And as uh, Kevin and Jen come in and take the reins, Father, we just lift them up to you. They are gifted, they are committed, and uh, it would be hard to find a younger couple that were more ready for this church. And so we lift them up to you. Thank you so much for who they are and what you've done in their lives already. Uh, thank you that you providentially led them to Harvest Church. And Lord, as we uh, continue to uh, carry out your will in all kinds of different ways. Uh, we pray that more than anything else, that we would be honest uh, with people, that we would be edifying to one another, that we would continue to build up the body of Christ in such a way that the corporate testimony has this incredible impact uh, where we live uh, here in uh, Orange County. And the Lord, uh, good things are going to come out of this. And so we thank you. We thank you for what you're going to do in advance. And we give you all of the glory for the past, for the present, and for the future as well. And all God's people said in a really loud voice, yeah. amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. I think there's the uh, doorbell. Hello.
make your pegs around. You want me to spend that time? No, no, no. You're okay. We're good. We're good. <laughs> this is my daughter. Wow. Oh, wow. It's hard to tell him to the Congrats. Pastor Gary, Suzanne, I uh, hope you were pleasantly surprised by that little presentation. Incredibly surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> that was great. Well, we have more. So, Kimberly? Greetings, Gary and Suzanne. Uh, we want to share with you a song, and Priscilla's going to tell you a little bit about it. Yes, and we just want to let you know that we have been so blessed by you and Gary and, and Suzanne um, during your time at Harvest, and it has been such a joyful experience for us. And we wanted to share this song written by Paul Baloche, and it's called No Eye Has Seen, and it talks about our future hope that we have in Christ. No eye has seen no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what the Lord has prepared, but by His Spirit He has revealed His plan to those who love Him. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what the Lord has prepared, but by His Spirit He has revealed His plan to those who love Him. We've been held by His everlasting love, led with loving kindness by His hand. to come, time will understand the mystery of His plan. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what the Lord has prepared, but by His Spirit He has revealed His 
plan to those who love Him. We've been held by His everlasting love, led with loving kindness by His hand. We have hope for the future yet to come, and time will understand the mystery of His plan. what the Lord has prepared, but by His Spirit He has revealed His plan to those who love Him, His plan to those who love Him, His plan to those who love Him. Pastor Gary, Suzanne, we're really going to miss you guys. We hope you still come to Couples Garden. Please do come. Assuming we're going to be meeting in person. Please do visit us at Couples Garden. Bye guys, we love you. We miss you guys. Thank you so much for all your service uh, at Harvest. Bye. Hopefully we'll see you again. Hey Pastor Gary and Suzanne, uh, we're the Rats and Opera Tombs. I'm Jack. Sharon. Hannah. Obviously you know that. Um, we wanted to say that we're grateful for all they have done and uh, for, for, for Harvest Community Church and for us. Um, I want to thank Suzanne for last summer that I was able to uh, be in the women's study with you. Um, it was so good to have you there and for you to provide your insight. For Pastor Gary, I will always remember your Daniel study and um, how passionate you were when you taught that. So thank you so much, and we're really gonna miss you. Yeah, and good luck, and God bless. We'll be praying for you guys. Thank you. Here are some special sentiments specifically for the stubble fields in the key of S minor because it is so sad and sorrowful. You've assimilated into our society by saving your shoes for outside and savoring staples such as sweet and sour chicken soy sauce and rice. Thank you for your sound sermons and silly stories such as skipping service and sneakily stealing away to a stadium to survey a sports spectacle. <laughs> to sweet supportive Suzanne, you've been a salient, sensitive, sage, steady, and sacrificial sister. <laughs> you've supplied stability, sanity, and sacred support. We shall savor your sarcasm, subtle humor, and simple sense. <laughs> it is with somber sadness that we say sayonara. That means goodbye in Japanese. And send you off in a seven in the sevenfold spirit. <laughs> See you soon. Hi, Pastor Gary and Suzanne. We can't believe the time has come so quickly to say farewell, never goodbye. We have been blessed by you both so much. Pastor Gary, thank you so much for teaching us and leading us well. We love you both so much. We're really going to miss you. Right. We love you and love miss you. you. <laughs> wow. Uh, we enjoyed that. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now we have a time of uh, open community sharing and sharing of any special messages that uh, we have for Pastor Gary and Suzanne. And to start us off, we have Jerry who will start us. Hey, Pastor Gary. I just wanted to share a few words personally. Um, I remember the first time we met with you, it was in a park. Eric, Tom, I think maybe Glenn Ha met with you. And that was our very first introduction to you. And we always, we found you as a very calm, very, very um, a, a assured person. And you kind of knew, you know, what your strengths and weaknesses were. And uh, um, you just offered yourself as a, as a possibility. And you said, hey, if you guys want to try me out, um, I'm all for it. And so um, by... Um, 
just by God's grace, he led us to, to say yes to you. And we're so glad that we did because it's been a great uh, two and a half years. As one of the few people who've got to work with you so closely over those times, I just really appreciate your, your steadfastness, your, your solid, uh, calm demeanor. And uh, just like, like the Chow family said, your sarcasm and your jokes, I uh, love those. But just your, just your spirit and, and your leading and guiding us through this time. It's just been a really great time and we appreciate you and Suzanne. And it's just been such a blessing to get to know you and we look forward to spending more time with you in the future, whatever God holds for us. But thank you again so much. Again, we love you and uh, uh, we couldn't have gone through this time without you. And I wanna just leave it open to others to share as well. Time is open for anyone. You can unmute your mic in when you wanna speak and give a message. Hey Gary, it's Chuck. Just want you to know, I hope you can hear this, that uh, my transition to Harvest, been here two and a half years, came because you were there after being with you for over 20 years at Voyagers and you made my transition to a new church so easy. And I sure will miss you, bud. Hey, Pastor Gary, this is Jim, um, Ching Ching, and I uh, just wanted to thank you on behalf of the men's ministry, uh, you know, your wonderful support of the ministry, your facilitating uh, some, you know, studies and uh, the nuggets of wisdom that we men get to live by uh, that you've given to us. Uh, I think we can pretty much confidently say that we're all better men, more Christ-like because of your presence uh, in our studies. Uh, on behalf of the men, we wanted to present you with this uh, little collector's item. It's uh, the Lost Sermons of uh, C.H. Uh, Spurgeon. Um, we're going to be signing it for you and then delivering it to you. Uh, I hope you don't have this, but uh, if you do, uh, it's at least signed by us. So again, uh, it's been so wonderful having you here, and uh, we have an open invitation for you to stop by and join our study anytime you like. And uh, Ching Ching would like to say something too. I just, um, sorry, I just am so thankful for both of you. Um, we're just an example of Christ's love to us and for the whole Harvest family. Um, thank you especially to Suzanne for all the wisdom and encouragement you given to all of us, especially through the women's ministry. And we're just so blessed by your presence in our lives and you'll be sorely missed. So just thank you so much for just, um, just who you are and just the amazing uh, ministries and blessings you've been in each one of our lives. So we'll miss you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for those kind words. Um, just wanted to say thank you uh, for the way you've blessed us so much. I'm still, we are still in a state of denial. I know I am. And um, Suzanne, uh, I still owe you guys a private recital for your your um, <laughs> grand uh, granddaughter and your family. And yeah, I just can't believe it. I just uh, was just so sad and. Um, We'll miss you guys. Thank you. Just, you've blessed us beyond words. Thank you so much. Pastor Gary and Suzanne, I can't believe that it's already been two years. Um, oh, three years, almost three years. And I just remember when Pastor Curtis and Carol left and then Ben left, like there was our church had such a time of uncertainty, but you brought stability, you brought peace. There's, um, just the way that you were able to grow our church and say that it is going to be okay. And here's our chance. And we are so grateful for you too. Just the way that you live out your life, the way that um, you're such a godly example to each one of us. And we thank God for just uh, the period that we have. And it's not a goodbye, but that I'll see you again. Love you and we'll miss you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Pastor Gary and Suzanne, this is Dwayne and Juliet. We just want to really thank you for the, what seems like a short period of time, but two and a half years of, has just gone by so quickly. And you were such, such um, important people in our lives and, and how you, you, just like Juliana said, you stepped into the breach. You know, it was, it was a period of time that we needed that type of maturity, that type of stability, that type of Christ leadership. And we just thank you so much for the both of you. You know, Juliet and I just um, really um, adore each of you and we will, we will love and miss you. <laughs> Hi, Pastor Gary and Suzanne, it's Mike and Tina. We just want to say thank you so much for um, being there on the first day of our rest of our lives, and we will never forget that. So blessed by both of you, and um, we love you dearly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Pastor Gary and Suzanne. Uh, this is Fred and Kim. Mm -hmm. um, you have made it so uh, important first of all, and, and, uh, and to help us uh, tra transition from Michigan to, to Harvest uh, because of your messages. And, and I, I really uh, enjoy um, uh, your sermons and especially in the men's group, uh, I've learned so much uh, from you. I appreciate just your, your honest and sometimes very funny uh, one-liner. Um, um, I'm going to miss you. We're going to miss you. And, and just thank you just uh, for just being uh, here for the last uh, almost three years. And then it's the same time that we kind of um, transition to California from Michigan. So thank you and God bless. Hi, Pastor Gary and Suzanne. This is Brenda. I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, when you first came to us, you didn't even know us. We didn't know you very well, but we were going through a difficult time, and you came, and you prayed with us, and you sat with us, and you visited us at the hospital, even though we forgot to tell you about non-visiting hours. <laughs> um, thank you so much. We, we, you, have, you both of you have meant so much to our family. We thank you so much, and we miss you so much. Ellie, I think I wanted to say something, but she's forgotten. Pastor Gary, Susan. <laughs> Little miracle girl. <laughs> oh, sweet. Thank you. Pastor Gary and Suzanne, this is Tanya and Trey. I think a lot of people say a lot of things I totally agree, but I just want to thank you for your kindness and your authenticity and what it means and what it looks like to walk with Jesus for a lifetime. I think about, um, like, this is not just, you didn't just take on a job. You already had your career as a pastor and pastor's mm -hmm. wife, but you simply took on this opportunity because that's what you do as a Christian and that's what God called you to do. And you loved us unconditionally you were real, like you never pretended to be someone that you were not, and you taught us what it means to be a real follower of Jesus, that we're not perfect, we have good days and we have bad days, and you shared that um, at the, you know, in front of, on Sundays, Pastor Gary, all your stories about your amazing wife and your family, your boys, and um, we are gonna miss you so much. Mm -hmm. And we so appreciate you and for the love that you've extended to the Harvest family. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We've appreciated just your, um, the, just the presence, both of you, that you bless us so much just with your presence, like the maturity, the life experience, uh, kind, of, kind of, you know, you're not old enough to be my parents, but like paternal, just a paternal presence, right? <laughs> Guiding us through the uncertainty that people have mentioned already. And yeah, really, the, just the, the, the depth of not just the the sermons and the time in the word but a, a life well lived and you know you, you just you bring that so generously so 
uh, we've been really touched even through the, the quarantine times. We can't be together, but just I feel like you've really gone to a new level, just kind of really touching the heart, and God's really used you that way in our lives. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, this is Daryl and Angela. Yeah. I have creativity artwork, so you can read. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pastor Gary. It was great to have, be part of a small group with you. I learned so much and I've been touched by a lot of your teachings. Mm. And Suzanne as well. This one says Gary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for touching our lives, our church, our community. Thank just a part of us. We'll miss you. Please visit. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Pastor Gary and Suzanne, I just want to say thank you for just how faithful you've been the last two and a half or three years. So just want to say thank you. And you know that I love you guys and we love you in our household. I think what I want to say is that I really appreciate even this message that you had today about who you are, Pastor Gary and Suzanne. You both are people that I see as people of integrity and honesty, and you have served with kindness to all of us. And so thank you. You have made a world of difference in all of our lives. So we're praying that you'll still come visit us, and we'll really miss you a lot. Thank you so much. Also, Suzanne, for loving the women so well. I love seeing you in all the women's events and just your teaching as well as Pastor Gary's teaching. You both have really shaped a lot of our hearts. So thank you and blessings to you guys. Thank you, Pastor. You're on. Test, test. Oh, okay. okay, yeah. Thank you, Pastor Gary. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, I feel like we've just really gotten to start to know you. So we're not saying goodbye here. We're saying hi. And uh, we really look forward to seeing more of you in the future. And I believe you might even officiate a daughter's wedding. <laughs> Hope, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's available for all of us. And, and we sure would appreciate that. And uh, yeah, you just, your, your words have really touched us all, uh, young and old. Um, yeah, your message just always is very poignant, and, and uh, it, it really uh, comes home to us. So thank you for your words. Suzanne, thank you for all the support, because we know Gary would not be uh, able to do it without you. Um, and Jennifer, maybe? Yeah, we just, um, you've touched us in many ways. Your messages have resonated through us, not just through your sermon, but just through, um, you know, our contacts with you on Sundays, and just uh, your personal uh, uh you're personable to us. We can relate to you and we're just so appreciative. And most of all, I really appreciate just the, um, the role models that you are and the life that you lived. Your relationship was just very endearing. You just know that Gary loved you so much and that's very admirable. And um, yeah, you're, you're, a, you're a marriage that we, uh, we would emulate. So, and thank you so much for being with us. Like he said, we don't consider this as a goodbye. Um, but just, um, thank you for blessing us, and um, we'll continue to be blessed by uh, by you guys. We'll miss you. For sure. hmm. thank thank you. We love you guys. Love you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Oh. Gary, Suzanne, it just seems like yesterday you, you came in our midst, and I just want to say on behalf of the ARCA family, we just have just learned so much, Pastor Gary, from your teachings and um, just your life experiences, and Suzanne, um, just your wisdom and your love for us uh, truly touched, and we know um, we will miss you, but we know you'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Hi, Pastor Gary and Suzette. <coughs> um, Sammy, you? <laughs> I 
I was just listening to everybody um, say how much they love you and thank you. And I had the same sentiments. Here's my message to you. Um, so <clears throat> just like your sermon, here's my chance. <laughs> here's my chance. Because um, I've been living by the motto, it's never too late until you're dead. <laughs> and I'm not dead yet. <laughs> and so, Suzanne, I'm going to still take you up on that cup of coffee that we've talked about for now for the past two years. <laughs> and Pastor Gary, I want to thank you for um, speaking truth, some truths that were very hard in the Bible, doctrines that, are, that can cause division. But you are always faithful. And I really thank you for that. Um, I have been so encouraged by all of your words uh, through your lives. And as the church, it's never goodbye because it's not today, but I'll see you in tomorrow up there. So thank you. And I love you both. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you. Hi, Gary and Suzanne. Um, just want to say thank you so much for um, just all of your messages and just how you've really, um, you know, touched all of us here at Harvest. And for Suzanne, I just want to say thank you so much for meeting with the um, with the elders' wives. I think just the time that you you spent in um, just investing in us and just meeting with us every month and just the studies we've done. It's just really been a blessing and um, just investing in me too and just listening to me. So I really appreciate you both and we're going to miss you a lot. And we have this for you. Hey girls, come say hi. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. For those of you who have made signs, if we can raise them up all at the same time and we can possibly get uh, I don't know, a screenshot or it'll be on video or something that's not showing too well. <laughs> that would be great. So hold them up all at the same time. Cool, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> perfect perfect thank you thank you okay and the worship team has uh, our benediction for us. Thanks everybody for um, just your sharing and your heartfelt um, thoughts and, and prayers for the stubble fields. Um, we lift them up to the Lord and we know that God will continue to use them, uh, not only in, in Harvest, um, but in Irvine and Orange County and wherever else uh, he may take them. Um, we will close with a benediction, but we're going to do a little bit differently this week. Uh, we're going to sing the benediction, so let's all sing it together, and we're going to sing the song, The Blessing, which actually comes from the passage uh, number 624, and it is the blessing that uh, we sing and we say to each other at the end of our services, but we're going to sing it to, to one another. We're going to sing it to the stubble fields. We're going to sing it to the McGills as they begin uh, their service with us. And we just want to uh, offer a heartfelt uh, praises to the Lord uh, to, bless, uh, to bless all of us. And so uh, let's sing it together. The Lord 
bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Sing it together. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward
Lord, thank you for the blessing of this morning. It's because of you that we're here, that you draw us together. But it's also because of you that you've drawn special people like the Stubblefields into our lives. Lord, thank you for their blessings upon us, upon our family. Thank you for their blessings upon the future of Harvest, their blessings upon Kevin and Jen. Lord, we want to return that favor and ask for your blessings upon them, to their children, to their children's children, a thousand generations. We give you thanks, Lord, and it's all because of you. It's all because of your glory. We want to glorify you in all that we do by loving Christ and those whom Christ loves. We give you thanks for this day. Thank you that we can celebrate and worship together. We give thanks to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this morning. And uh, we just want to welcome you back next week as we um, say hello to the McGills and uh, pass the baton and just have an additional celebration as we continue in this next chapter of Harvest Life. But uh, we want to thank you for joining us, and we're going to say, say goodbye. Have a great afternoon. Um, be safe. Be careful. And uh, just continue to glorify God in all that you do. Amen and amen.